to the valleys of South Wales. This is where I grew up, kind of, not this valley. I grew up in the next valley over in a little place called Pont de Preed, but this is a little hill called Pempich in the Rhondda Valleys. And it's about as quintessential a view you can find of a South Walian valley. Check it out. I've got my camera there time lapsing. And hopefully I'm gonna get a moonrise here. But there does seem to be a little bit of low cloud on the horizon and there's also some haze and smoke coming from a mountain fire over there, a big grass fire. And it's crazy because I can smell it, I can really smell it because last week I had an operation on my nose, it was the fourth operation in eight years to try and fix the airflow in my nose which is, oh man, I've been suffering for over a decade now with tonsillitis, sinusitis, sleep apnea, all these problems and now for the first time in like 15 years I can breathe through both nostrils and Still a bit of recovery to go, but damn, it feels good. <laughs> anyway, today, guys, I've got a new moon bazooka to test out. Those of you who follow my channel already will know that I refer to the Sigma 150 600mm lens as a moon bazooka because I only use it to photograph the moon. But today, I think it's getting replaced, and I've also got a new tripod head for the moon bazooka setup which is also a bit of a game changer so more on that after this intro So we're 10 minutes past the moonrise time and there's still no sign of it. So I'm guessing that horizon cloud is quite thick. Just wondering how long it's gonna take for the moon to, to clear it. And I'm shooting 100 mil, so I haven't got much of a frame. Uh, I'm hoping it clears the cloud and it stays within the frame, but the, the new moon bazooka guys is, do I play a drum roll? Is that too cheesy? But the new Moon Bazooka is the Sony 100 to 400. And I'm using a Benro geared head. Can't remember the precise name of it, but I'll stick it up on screen. And I'll explain why I'm using that head in a moment. But I've also got a two times extender for this, which gives me a focal length of 800 mil and if I video in crop sensor mode that gives me 1200 mil and I could theoretically use the clear image zoom on the Sony bodies and get another two times out of that and get 2400 mil on the moon which is now starting to pop up from the clouds I don't know if you can see that behind me So there's a gorgeous red orange hue on the moon right now and it's because when the moon is very low on the horizon Earth's light bounces off Earth's atmosphere and gets scattered and the red light hits the moon and reflects off the moon and as the moon gets higher and higher it'll start getting whiter and whiter but it's just gorgeous
Okay guys, so I'm first going to talk about the new head, the geared head that I'm using. So the problem I was having with ball heads is that you line up your composition, you tighten the ball head, and then when you let go there's always a little bit of sag, and the camera and lens drop a little bit, especially when you've got these big heavy lens and body setups. There's always a little bit of sag, and when you're shooting at 600mm, 800mm, that little bit of sag is a huge change in the composition that you lined up and it was causing real frustration. With the geared head, you can make minute adjustments in three different axes very easily, and there's no sag, and no surprise, there's no extra changes. So if I need to move the camera up a little bit, I just turn this knob and you get a very precise adjustment, and it's really solved the problem. It's, you can just set your composition exactly how you want it. You know the camera's not gonna sag or drop, so, this has been a life changer. This is the Benro three-way head. Um, it's pretty lightweight for what it is. And I, again, it's just really solved a problem with my moon photography. The other good thing I see this geared head being used for is that it can be good to mount a star tracker. And when you're aligned into Polaris, you can use the precise movement of the gears to line your star tracker up with Polaris. So if you don't have an equatorial mount for your star tracker, this could be a really good option and a, a versatile option, but that's not what today's video is about. I'm not gonna go into that. So why am I changing my moon bazooka from my trusty old Sigma 150 to 600 mil to the Sony 100, 400? And there are three main reasons, size, weight, and performance. So in terms of size, as you can see, the Sony is a lot smaller, it's thinner, it's shorter. And the Sigma has this like really bulbous front end, which kind of, so it gets wider at the end, um, which can make it a little bit of a nuisance when packing sometimes. The Sony weighs 1,395 grams. The Sigma with the MC11 adapter, because I'm shooting on Sony, weighs a total of 2,050 grams. So it's considerably heavier. And even when I have the two times extender on the Sony, the Sony weighs 1,500, this thing weighs over 2,000. So I'm saving a considerable amount of weight. And even with the two times extender, even with the two times extender, I now have a lens which is still smaller, still lighter, and has 200 mil extra reach than the Sigma 150 to 600 mil. So that's quite significant as well. Now, talking about size again, the thing with these lenses, they have these collars on them. The Sigma's is not removable, but the Sony has this really awesome feature where you unscrew this little knob, push this little button, and the foot comes off. So this now becomes even more packable and you can put the tripod foot somewhere else in your bag so this makes it much easier to pack sometimes as well and if you want there's even 3 8 of an inch thread there so you could put an Arca Swiss plate directly onto the lens and go without the tripod foot altogether if you wanted so that's a pretty neat feature the other neat feature that the Sigma doesn't have is the Sony has these customizable buttons on the outside of the lens. So you can assign things like eye autofocus to one of these buttons, which is pretty cool. Probably not gonna use them, but at some point in the future, I might need them or I might think of a creative way to use them. So it's nice that they are there. Now, in terms of performance, the, the Sigma has done me really well. There's one problem I've been having with it, and that is between 400 and 600 mil, it's not at its best, and there is a bit of chromatic aberration, which sometimes causes a headache on the edge of the moon, especially when you're doing a HDR shot of the moon. Uh, you typically get like an orange or pink sort of edge around the edge of the moon, and it can be a bit of a nuisance in post-production to fix this, so it's a headache I'd like to try and avoid, if possible. I'm hoping the Sony will do that for me. But that said, the performance of this lens is amazing. I mean, it's really affordable as well. It's about 700 to 800 pound in the UK. And if you're shooting on a Sony like I am, you'll need an MC11 adapter, which will set you back another 150 to 180 pound. So in total, 800 to 900 pound, 
and I've done some pretty awesome things with this lens. I mean, you've seen in my past vlogs that I photographed the International Space Station crossing the face of the moon with this lens. You can watch that vlog. I'll drop a little link up there. I've even photographed the crescent moon with Saturn where you can even see Saturn's rings. And I've also managed to photograph the moon next to Jupiter where you can even see three of Jupiter's moons in that image as well. Sony, on the other hand, is a lot more expensive. This retails in the UK for about £2,400. The two times extender is going to set you back another £400 to £500 as well. So it's considerably more expensive. I was quite lucky the guys at London Camera Exchange hooked me up with a pretty irresistible deal at the photography show this year. So shout out to those guys. They also provided me with my Sony a7 III at the previous photography show before the a7 III had even come out. And they, again, gave me a really, really good price that I couldn't say no to. So shout out to London Camera Exchange. So yeah, it's considerably more expensive, but... Uh, the main reason for me upgrading was I'm currently working on a documentary with the BBC called Moonshot. It's centered around me taking photographs of the moon. So I needed something of the utmost best quality and performance. Having the native Sony mount is an added bonus and saving that size and weight at this stage for me is, is really important. I'm also going to be taking it to Chile in July. I'm going with Adrian Mauduit. The Astroman saga continues uh, and we'll be photographing, hopefully weather permitting, the total solar eclipse. So that size and weight saving is huge for me. Traveling to the other side of the world uh, and carrying it around for three weeks in Chile. So these margins at this stage in my career are, are quite important. But yeah, I just wanted to share this quick update with you guys because the, the moon bazooka uh, has been quite a saga on this channel. And I know if you guys saw me using the Sony, you'd all be asking, where's the Sigma gone? Um, and again, I'm not bashing the Sigma in this video. I've done some incredible things with this lens. For the price, it is phenomenal. And it's the kind of lens that a lot of people use for sports and wildlife photography so it might be a lens that you have already and using it for moon photography might give it an extra lease of life for you so it's a really good affordable highly versatile lens and it's really good for moon photography it's probably one of the cheapest ways that you can shoot at 600 mil and it also works pretty well with the 1.4 extender, the Sigma 1.4 extender so you can get an extra bit of reach out of it as well so I'm kind of sad to be letting it go, but the old moon bazooka, eh? <laughs> I don't know if I can really call this a bazooka. It's not quite the same as this beast, but I don't know. What should I call this one, guys? Get in the comments below and let me know. The moon sniper, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching another video. Hopefully, I'll get some uh, awesome moon footage with this lens to show you soon. If not, follow along for the solar eclipse in July. And again in July, the release of my BBC documentary Moonshot, which will be available on iPlayer. So that's coming soon. And yeah, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. But this one, my one, is going to be used for one purpose only, and that is photographing the moon. So I'm going to affectionately call this my moon bazooka. Oh, oh, oh.